So what bitrate and resolution should I be streaming at? How can I control my units from the field? What about power, delay, frame rate, color? In this video, we'll be going through the LiveView system and how you can set yourself up for success when you're producing an at-home production event. Before we dive in, we do have a white paper available in the description that will go through further tech and spec. So if you're interested in learning more, make sure you head down there and download it. It's absolutely free and you'll learn a lot. Let's start by talking about LiveView Central. LiveView Central is our management platform that allows full control and monitoring of your LiveView ecosystem via any browser supported computer or tablet. LiveView Central enables you to see the list of all your units. It actually allows you to have a multi-view capability that gives you a live preview image of any incoming feeds. And from there, you can make setting changes on your devices. Changes such as setting up streaming destinations, channel selection on a unit, setting the delay between encoder and decoder, streaming bitrate, ability to stop and start a stream, manage your field unit's network interfaces, and bandwidth capping. You can also enable least cost bonding, which prioritizes one network interface, specifically an ethernet connection, over the other network interfaces. You can enter metadata information and configure your production tools, such as IP pipe, LU smart, video return, tally light, and audio connect. Some of these abilities are also offered on the LiveView Control app. This is our mobile app, giving you easy access to your units while in the field. For a remote production, having all the camera feeds in sync is the most important element. When two cameras are viewing the same action, particularly fast action, if the cameras and video feeds are not in sync, then cutting from one camera to the other during production may create a jump forward or back in time, which is painfully visible to the viewer. LiveView's LRT protocol includes an element we call precision timing. What this means is we give the customer control of the delay between a field encoder and a receiver, so they can adjust to add buffer time based on a given location's network. The trick to sync up multiple field units is just to set the delay the same across all devices. This delay is a true glass-to-glass -glass delay, meaning from the camera lens to the output monitor, the timing is precise. Now that we've covered LiveView Central and FrameSync, it's time to sort out how best to set your units up. In a way, this is the easiest part of the workflow to understand. The primary function of the LiveView Remy solution is to plug in each camera source and send the video back to your production location at the same delay. The system has a built-in network and can support up to 4K P60. From there, you cut the programming. Simple enough. Of course, it's obvious you want to transmit the highest quality video you possibly can. But there are a few considerations that are often brought up to achieve this goal. Streaming bitrate is probably the most important. And what is best for your production really depends on three things when using LiveView. Low motion or high motion, video resolution, and the given network conditions. To help, we've built a chart to suggest the optimal streaming bitrate for any profile your event falls into. These minor tweaks will optimize your production quality and fine tune how best to utilize the LiveView system. Now, let's get down to power. This section is very simple. Each unit has an internal battery. When streaming longer than the internal battery life allows, you can connect to an external battery pack, like an Anton Bauer, or leave the unit plugged into a power outlet and the new LU800 unit has a dedicated power input specifically for an external battery, giving you two easy and separate ways to charge and power your unit. Hopefully, we answered most of your questions about the LiveView system with this specific workflow. Again, there are a lot of other points, tech and spec, and other things covered in the white paper in the description. Thank you so much for watching. In the next episode, we'll be talking about live use solutions for communications and audio. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. We'll see you in the next video.